something very important to keep in mind is when you're passing guard. There's a position called the headquarters. It's when you're inside of his guard, but you have to keep it from closing. Okay, if you're on two knees, it's likely that you're not gonna have the proper mobility. You're gonna be very easy to balance. And just overall, you're gonna get stuck in a close guard if they wanna put you in a close guard. Okay, so if I'm here, I'm gonna push him back here, and get into this position right this elbow and thigh knee, what I'm doing is, is that I'm pushing into my thigh and I'm keeping a wide base. Okay, so Davis, if you were to get grips, what grips would you get? So if he wants a daily heave, it's fine. Because I'm going to just keep walking this and killing that daily heave hook. And I'm constantly readjusting this grip. This grip is a twist and pull, and I'm locking my elbow to my thigh, making my right arm and my right leg one unit, and it's really pressed into the mat. My left hand is wide, and the reason why it's wide, and the reason why I pull, is to lock his hips and to jam his hips. He's more so on his back, so you see, you see how easy it is to rotate him? If he lets go of the collar and tries to reach my hand, I can always move it out that way, but he removed the point of contact, and I'm still super wide. Even if he has a right foot on my hip, which he does, and he wants to create space, he regrips back to the collar. If he starts pushing me away, I can always stand up. I can move this here when I push it off to the side and begin to compress him and fold his knees into more of a fetal position. Or, if he feels me disconnected, and he will go to the right side here, and then we get into the knee cut. Without stopping, you don't need to stop on the knee. Cut. You don't need to stop on the knee cut because they cut your leg. So, whenever you are in the headquarters position, very important that you have a wide pyramid of face. Okay. So let's say I'm going in here. He gets his grips here. He gets feet on the hips. So he wants to make the four points of contact. I need to be mindful of which four points they are so I can always remove them. But at the same time, I constantly need to be jamming his hips and walking into his hips and readjusting. He'll be pushing me one way or another. You see how he's twisted up right here. I cannot let him separate my elbow and knee because then that foot will go on the hip or triangle where that left foot will go on the hip push away and then he can pull me right back in a closed guard and now all that work for nothing. So when you get into headquarters, it's me up and it's preventing him from closing the guard. This elbow preferably should be on top or on the outside because you can keep your knee from opening. If it's on the inside, he can kind of push that knee open and pull it through here right there. So not the best. Let's lock it here. But I can get a tilt here because this hand is pushing me into my leg. Okay, I can always stand up. So easy is to rotate. Your foot has to be alive. This is an alive foot because as he pushes me back, I can begin to remove a point of contest from here. I can sit on here. I can begin to establish a deep cut right here. Okay, and I know that he's. So his, I can feel where his feet are, but I wouldn't just stop here and be talking. I would just be constantly going through here and jamming that underhook. I'm going north-south and not really staying in that side So, you know, even when you're standing, he sits up and he engages a guard here. This right here is a much better option for me. And in essence, the stand, and unless you understand how to counter what he's got to deal with here. But here, I can keep walking this this way here, okay? And readjusting this, because I want to twist his spine up a bit right here, and keep walking the foot and the knee. Typically, 
he will kind of extend and he'll try to pull him to the other side. And then you're able to move yourself into your knee. Because you can move your knee and foot across because I'm very dynamic. Is that why Jason's here with the hand was helping you fight that day? Because I don't push this way and I'm falling. Correct. Because I'm, I'm, I'm killing his daily heave with the shin. So, you, so the key also to use your shin properly do this right here. Okay. He wants to, see, he's actually moving the wrong way. He needs to have his hip on my foot and this knee here. Okay. So you see how he's tilting me that way? This is not very good for me. So even if I post out here, I'm going to begin to move my knee and foot out towards the hook and begin to kill that daily heave. Because his hand can't feel very good. If I start dropping this right here, it'll be pressure on his hand. He'll pull this hand out and he'll reset it and then I'll walk that foot forward and then the knee, the foot, then the knee. You don't want your foot too behind the knee because then you lose power with the knee and shin. The whole power is I walk the foot and then the hip and the shin. So from here, for me to move my right foot and right elbow as one unit, I tilt to my left. Okay, because if I'm Wait on this side, I can't even lift my foot off the mat. I tilt this way. Because if he starts trying to create space here, I'm able to immediately move to that side and then you go through and get a better position. So, what I want you guys to do is do just have stability and balance with this headquarters position. He wants to have a good daily healing here, he's got a good hook, and I can jam it up right about here, okay? If I jam it good, this collar oh, yeah, doesn't, him, doesn't do him as much good. If your hand is too close, you can switch real easy. And then it's a problem for me, because now he took out one of my legs, and now I'm on my right foot and left foot, and I don't have to balance that way. So the second that that happens, so let's go here, and I start pulling him to the opposite side. Because all my foot, in order for me to move my shin here, all I have to do is just push here, move my foot, and then move my knee across. And then from here, I'm able to move cut through and get to the most dominant position. Here, we'll block the hip. All right, guys, time. We'll go to the north south. So, what I want you guys to do is just get comfortable with the headquarters. so that I can begin to array. Or go more south, because his legs are gonna get in the way when we pass it. So that headquarters position gives you opportunities to pass to the right, to the left, sometimes down the center. That's not as much fun it is for him as it is for me. So I'm gonna be here, feeling back, foot on the hip. I can still begin to kill that daily heel. You see how wide I am? My left hand, my right foot. This kills the daily heaver, especially if the toes point that way. For a good daily heaver, I want to grab the heel. Yeah, and pull the heel and use the knee yes, to do that. So moving my foot that way. It's very difficult for me to turn my knee that way when I my foot. Heel is being pulled and my foot is voluntarily. But I'm still fairly stable here. Okay? So what I can do is I can begin to put weight back here. Okay? Lift my heel and turn my toes and drive forward. Because if he's pulling my heel and I'm gonna try to pull my heel, he's gonna win that battle. So I'm gonna put weight on my foot, barely weight on my heel, and then move my toes out. So now I can begin to drive this way. And then his foot's gonna 
have a problem here, he's got to remove that foot. Because if he keeps this uh, daily heel hook in here, it's almost like he gets foot blocked. So he will pull that out, and then you're able to drive it forward and just stay on top here. Because I'm jamming him up, and I have a good control here. But the point is, is for you guys to be comfortable in this, uh, what do you call it, headquarters position. The bad thing is when you let your elbow and knee separate. So when you reach on the same side here, reach, twist, and I'm gonna lock it to my thigh. So I'm almost almost like at an angle. And I wanna keep this foot out so I have good stability. Because I wanna see where he's gonna begin to shift my weight. See how he moved that knee across? So he put himself in this position here. So that here, now, it's a much better position for me. So I can, the more I can let go, all I gotta do is just do this. Chest to chest, side control on the part. And he'll get there because he can't hold it because he gets resistance. Okay. So, in that headquarters position, bottom person will do this. Now, we don't have a fan up here in that pocket. Your right shin makes contact with, yes, go down on your left knee. Yes. Say I'm right here, whether it be here or here, if he reaches for this, twist and pull. And your left hand, post it out. Not, not that way, post it out that way, yes. Yes, right here, okay? And this foot on the mat, yes. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull this elbow to your thigh and lock it to your thigh. Like right here, I don't have a lot of power. So he can begin to walk this foot forward and, and, and begin to, yes, that really sucks for me. Keep this elbow on top. Yes, because for me, it's like if I pull this way, I don't have power, my hips are jammed, and I'm not in a very good position. Even if I go here, he can use that elbow to push that knee down and drive that knee over. Yes, and that's not good for me. Over here, what he can do, uh, from here, it's so spread out right here, and he's jamming me up right here. What he could do is he could just lift his chest up and with his forearm guide there and now drop his weight here and now still go and then he goes the opposite. So you see how he just basically folded me in a fetal position and slowly disconnected from the four points of contact, jammed my hips and progressed the pass. This is where your passing turns into a systematic disassembly of an open guard rather than just a pass. Because if you look at it, it's like, oh, I'm gonna knee cut. But yeah, but he's not gonna sit there and let you just knee cut. So what you have to be mindful of is the better your open guard is, you understand what they're doing and what kind of open guard they're playing. So you can begin to disassemble their open guard. So you recognize, oh, okay, well he's got a daily heel, I need to kill a daily heel, I need to remove the point of contact, which would be that foot or a grip. Because look what happens here. If I'm here and he's got a good daily heel here, okay. I can stand up here, squat here, and then this right here. Because now he's got a big problem. Two points ago. From here, look. You leg drive and you pass right away. Very effective. That daily heave will fall apart real quick when you remove a grip. So, and have your toes active so that you can always stand up. So even if you got here, right here. Constantly driving, more like a circular motion in order to jam his hip. And see how he's offline, like his head is offline of his spine? If he's here, he's more powerful. Push me away. See how much he can push me back? But see, I'm okay here. But if he's here, push me back. See how he pushes himself into a worse position, which makes it easier for me to remove this here, here. I'm gonna begin to get into a pass. What were you doing? I make his head go offline like this, of the spine. So you make his head go out an arc. I'm twisting, pulling that shoulder. So if you look at this right here, it's a straight line here. I'm here, look, and I'm pulling. See how his head's going this way here? Because in order for him to gain power, you gotta realign that head. Yeah, right there. Now he's got more power. So even here, if he pushes me away, I'm also ready to stand up. And I'm ready to stand up because my foot's alive. Here, yeah. Alright, let's try. One, two, three. 
just play with it. The bottom person, just give enough resistance to the top person to play with this position 